My name is Vitsanad. I'm one of the product managers at GitLab. And in this video, I would like to give you a short walkthrough of GitLab's Terraform integrations. As most GitLab features, we have these integrations documented as well. Um, and I will basically show everything that's current in the documentation. But it might still be nice to have a single project to get everything there. So what, do, that, what does GitLab offer today? to help you with infrastructure screws. First of all, we have something we call the GitLab Managed Terraform State. This is a storage backend for your Terraform uh, workflows and setups. I will show you how it works. Then we have merge request integrations specifically designed for Terraform to help with collaboration related to infrastructure school projects. And we maintain the GitLab Terraform provider that I'm going to use in this example. But let's get started. First, I'm going to create a new project. It's a totally blank one. So Terraform walkthrough seems like a good uh, project name here. I can make it private or public, doesn't matter. I will keep it private just for a demo and I will make it public later on if you want to check out the source code. Let's get started. Immediately, I will add a CI CD, and it might be tempting to use the apply template and look for Terraform, but actually, I recommend not to do this. Instead, go back to our documentation and copy the snippet we provide there. The reason why I recommend this approach instead of the, of the template here is that this documentation is the latest Terraform template that shipped with GitLab, and it's not available in the dropdown yet. So this is the approach that you can, that provides you the most benefits and uses these relative recent features of GitLab. Okay, let's commit these changes. <clears throat> and clearly there is no Terraform code, so this pipeline will fail. There's no reason even to check that out. Instead, let's clone this repository. Just a minute, I'm going to switch over to VS Code and let's clone everything here and then we can open it. Terraform walkthrough project. As you can see, we have the CIML file as before. Okay, um, now let me add a readme here to see what we want to do. Actually, what I want to do is pretty simple, I have to say. It's something like this one. Oops, uh, come on. No reason, that's it. So um, I want to create a GitLab project that's already actually done. Add the recommended CI, done. <clears throat> this is the project itself, what we will do. And then I want to change. So what I'm going to do is we are done with the project. We added the CI. Then I'm going to add some Terraform code that will run through the CI as we want it to be automated, and it will set an environment variable within GitLab using the GitLab Terraform provider. And then I'm going to change the environment variable in a separate branch to see how collaborations works in merge requests. So that's that's the plan for this video. Okay, uh, updated with me. Actually added. We are in the master branch though, so this will come important later on, but let's get started. Um, so let's add a Terraform file here. And I'm going to copy and paste. I already wrote it 
separately. So let's go through this quickly. <clears throat> I defined a backend, which is an HTTP backend. This is the definition needed for the GitLab main start from state or the environment variables required for configuring this backend will be done via CI variables and uh, environment variables in the CI job and the special CI YAML that we use here. We will have a look at it later on. The other thing we have are the providers, which actually just the GitLab provider that I'm using. We'll have to update the uh, project ID to match our project. So that's it. And then what I'm going to do is just reset meetings word. We just set a, an environment variable in this project. That's that's what we want to do today. Okay, so everything is set up. Uh, a few more things here is that there is one input variable that I have to provide to Terraform in order to be able to access GitLab using the GitLab provider itself. So <clears throat> to do this, what I'm going to do, I, I will create a personal access token and add it to, to my project. So let's go back to the browser and under setting CI CD variables, I'm going to add TF or GitLab access token and the value is my personal access token. I'm going to protect and mask this variable. So here we go. And I think I'm, we are ready to go. So let's, oh no, not yet. There's one more caveat that I didn't spoke about, which is if we go back to the VS code, you can see that actually my code is Terraform code is in a Terraform subdirectory. So somehow we have to tell to CI job to use, to look for uh, Terraform files in the Terraform directory. And the CI seemingly has no setups accordingly, nothing that would speak about that. So what we have to do here is I opened already the Terraform template that we are using, which is these are templates that ship with GitLab. This is the one that's included if you use the dropdown, and this is the one that we are actually using. And it references another template you can see here, the Terraform slash base latest GitLab CI YAML. So let's see what do we have there. And this is undocumented right now, but probably I will just extend the docs in a minute. We can use a TF root variable that automatically changes directory into the specified directory and runs the Terraform commands in there. So let's apply this. TF root is Terraform. Here we go. And now we are good to commit these changes. Added initial, uh, so much better, Terraform rocks. Okay, and let's push these changes to GitLab. In GitLab, if we check out the CI CD pipeline, you can see that it's running right now. It will clearly take quite some time to run all the steps. We'll get back to this soon. <clears throat> but in the meantime, let's get started with our second topic. That is to create an environment where we can collaborate. So I want to change this environment variable in a different branch as here, the default branch is still called master. Let's call our new branch apprentice. And let's change its value to hello master. So now everything seems to be fine. So let's just commit to these changes. Say hello to your master. And we can push the changes immediately to create a new branch. And if we go back to GitLab, we can see the second pipeline running as well. 
<clears throat> this sounds pretty cool. Uh, as we want to collaborate on this code, let's open a merge request. Uh, okay, I don't have to fill out here anything. Let's just submit it. And I'm going to pause the recording for a while, uh, while all these pipelines run to finish or to failure or something. We'll see it in a minute. We we'll continue afterwards. Okay, so the first pipeline in on the master branch seems to be done. On the other hand, we can see that one of its steps, the deploy step, is set to be manual by default. You can just, uh, change this if you want to. So we're gonna run that as well. In the meantime, the base up runs in the apprentice branch. And I will tell you in advance that it will fail and it will wait with a good reason. Let's see where we are. Yes, it failed because there's no value for required variable, the GitLab access token. If you remember the GitLab access token is required in order to access the GitLab API through, through the GitLab Terraform provider. And we said it is an environment variable. So why is it failing? The reason is actually very simple. If I go to settings CICD and open the variable section, you can see that it is a protected variable. And protected variable means that it's only access accessible in protected branches. Now, master is a protected branch, but apprentice is not. So I can do two things. I will either remove the protectedness of this variable, or I will make apprentice a protected branch as well. Um, let's do the former. So this shouldn't be put any longer. Oh, and just right now, you can see the example variable appears here because the first pipeline run to finish. This is fully green now. Great. Um, let's restart the build here. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you what happened that actually, where is the state file? You can see uh, under operations menu, there's a Terraform submenu, so I can go just there. And we have, it says that we have a default state that was updated for the 54 seconds ago, and I have a few actions around that. I can download the state file only if we are project maintainers as I am, as I'm the owner. I can lock it or can I can remove the state file with all of its versions. What's important that this star from state <clears throat> backend provides versioning and encryption out of the box, including locking and everything like that. So it's a pretty cool HD backend. Okay, but this name might be even a warning for us because what we see here is that the default state, this was the same state that would be written by the apprentice branch as well, something we definitely don't want to do. One option for that would be to change the GitLab CI YAML and change the Terraform state name here to CI commit RAF or something like that. Now I want to do that, but this is just good to know. So let's get back here and let's see our pipelines. This is green, great. Let's see then the merge request. And in the merge request, we have one Terraform report that was generated in the pipeline. That's great, let's expand it. And I can see that there are, there's one resource to be changed. And with a click of a button, I go to this specific job and I can look up the plan output to see what is to be changed. So there are many things I could do here. Uh, if I would have a specific development environment and a production environment in the Terraform code, I can specify the environment scope as well. This is the documentation uh, for the GitLab Terraform provider. You can see the protected files. In our case, it was true and actually we set it by hand. So this is something you should never do. Instead, you should use Terraform to set an environment variable to be false and so on and so forth. But actually this is not the, that environment variable. So um, if you go back to the merge request and the merge, 
these changes, a merge pipeline kicked off. And the last step of that will be, again, a deploy step. And this, this deploy step will be manual as it was on master branch manual as well. But once we do that, the value will have to change. Let's see that. So I go back to CICD, check out the settings, and let's see the, the value of the example variable. That is greetings bird. Once the pipeline finishes, that value will change the greetings master. I'm going to stop recording again and we'll come back to show you what happened there. So <clears throat> the pipeline passed to green and as I told you, deploy stuff is still back. Once deployment runs, we'll have the environment variables updated. That was the quick walkthrough and kind of tutorial for GitLab Surfplum features. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to provide us feedback in any of our issues. Thank you very much.